The religion of the future will be a cosmic religion. It should transcend personal God and avoid dogma and theology. Can you feel it? A sort of anticipation growing stronger and stronger? Another way of putting it is time is speeding up. I've heard that discussion for a while now. I know most people have felt it at some point, maybe while watching the news or perhaps something in their own lives. Something big is about to happen. You can see signs of it all over the world. Revolutions rapidly spreading across the Middle East, protests occurring in America and Europe. Earthquakes are devastating the world, like in J Japan, Myanmar, and Greece. The global economy is failing so hard that it looks like we're looking forward into a global recession, the likes of which makes the 30s look like a cakewalk. Not to mention that if global warming doesn't put our planet into an ice age, we're gonna kill ourselves from overpopulation, for sure. And using the rate of doubling, we definitely don't have the resources to survive the way we are for maybe a little over 10 years. Yet, despite all of these things, we're about to learn something amazing. It's something that will transform the Earth into something completely different, something incredible and beautiful. Many people across the globe have learned about this, and they've applied it to themselves and witnessed marvelous changes. Others have dedicated their lives to talking about it, to teaching it. I'm someone who's still exploring it, and I want more people to talk about it with. Mind, body, spirit. This is the sacred trinity that allows us life on Earth. Without even one of these three, we could not function properly. Yet, in today's world, we only really truly understand two of the three. We have scientifically mapped the mind and the body. We understand ev next to every aspect about each of them. Yet, what do we really know about the spirit, the soul? What is it? Where does it come from? For centuries, religions have been the primary source for answers pertaining to the soul. But they're not concrete. Many different religions have a different answer and ideas about how things work on this level. Recently, however, a discovery was made, which led to new discoveries and further discoveries. These incredible insights went largely unnoticed by the global community, and while governments and secret services of the world acknowledge them, it wasn't something that really got to the masses. Today, this information is still slowly coming out, and I'm going to share it with you. In the world of science, what do we really know about thoughts? We know we can measure them by hooking up scanners. You can measure the frequency that are emitted when you think them. They're measurable, yet there isn't anywhere specific in the brain that holds them. Is it possible that you create your thoughts outside your mind? Mm, maybe not. But is it possible that you create your thoughts into the external world from your mind? This is what we're going to talk about today. Have you ever had a moment where you knew exactly what someone else was going to say about two or three seconds before they even started talking? Do you have a shared connection between a loved one or a pet where you can always tell exactly how the other is feeling or, or what they're thinking of, even if they're not really around? Have you ever met someone that you really got bad vibes from and your intuition turned out right? We've all had experiences like these at least a few times, some many more than others. There are even a few people who can kind of tap into this experience quite easily. I believe one of the terms for it is psychic? Let's say for the sake of discussion that when you think of something, anything, it appears right in front of you. No, not physically, but let's say it appears in a different realm that's in and around all of us. We'll just assume for now that it's not something that we're consciously aware of, and it's something that we're going to discuss later on. For now, let's just call it the thought realm. When you're doing something, you start by thinking about it. Whether you're building a pool in your backyard or making a sandwich, you have to have thought of it first. Even the subconscious thoughts for things like walking and breathing. This shouldn't be anything new to us. We think of things before we do them, even if it's a split second before them. This is just how we function, and our physical actions match the thoughts that we've created. You might say that you move through your thoughts, turning non-physical ideas into physical actions. When an inventor gets an idea, this idea can quickly spread throughout all of his colleagues and friends. Ideas and thoughts are spreadable. Multiple people can hold on to the same idea at once, allowing them to grow and develop further. In this scenario, don't think of thoughts as separate, but as a whole that everyone is latching onto. Of course, because we can't physically see this realm of thoughts, we can't tell exactly what the original idea was, only the interpretation that they describe using functions like speech and body language, as well as our own intuition, which is how thoughts connect to each other. Because of this, we add a bit of our own creation to the mix, our own spice, while still working towards the same common goal. A social gathering is another good example of this at work too. People gathering together because they share the same ideas, thoughts, and emotions as the rest of the people there. An example could be a college course on architecture. People interested in architecture would attend the course because they share the same interests mentally. This shouldn't be anything mind-blowing. It's, it's our day-to-day -day lives, just from a different perspective. Even if you're using something that someone else made, you're still creating this experience for yourself. You manifested that iPad or house or whatever into your experiences. So with thoughts connecting with other thoughts comes our first big realization. 
This new understanding of how intertwined we truly are, we are not only connected in the physical realm, but in a mental and spiritual way as well. Up until recently, humankind has always understood simply that they were connected only through their physical being. We assumed that the conscious experience, as well as all of the thinking, was totally 100% isolated from the rest of everyone else. The fact is, we're not. We are so connected with each other, it's almost impossible to believe. Think about almost every creature on Earth. What do we really know about the bond that connects them? Geese are able to travel long distances, switching who flies in front like clockwork. Many fish swim in large schools, and we know that they don't have a form of verbal communication. Our pets are able to communicate with each other without speaking. Yet, it's like they know what each other are feeling and connect in a very amazing personal way. Almost every observable creature on Earth has this connection with at least their own species, if not others. We as humans are the next step in life, but that doesn't mean we don't have this connection. What's to say we're not also connected to each other in this way? We've been out of touch with ourselves for an incredibly long time now, and we are growing increasingly disharmonic. Now, thoughts being created are just the tip of the iceberg. The real interesting part comes when you look at emotions. Emotions are much more powerful than thoughts. Emotions pull on you, they control your actions, they guide you throughout your life. It's not your thoughts that control where you sit in a class or on a bus, but it's if you like that girl or you think that guy smells. When a couple is together, it's their emotions that keep them tethered. Same with if they're fighting, it's their emotions that break them apart. You watch TV shows that you enjoy. You hang out with friends because you have emotional bonds with them. Now, this applies on a smaller scale too. Do you ever have a morning where you wake up grumpy and stub your toe and think, oh, this is just gonna be one of those days and find that the entire day afterwards just goes terrible and, and just everything goes wrong? What about the days when you wake up excited and happy and ready to go? Your whole day is just excellent in all of the right ways. Even if something bad does happen, you're less affected by it because you're in such a good place emotionally. The reason these differences in how your day goes is because of your emotional state. People like to think the world will go on exactly the same without you, but it really won't. People interact differently with other people, and everyone would have a completely different experience if you were not there. Imagine this scenario. There's a bully in a playground who's looking for someone to beat on. There's kids playing sports, kids skipping rope, kids on the swings. And then off to the side, there's one boy sitting in the grass watching the rest of everyone play. He doesn't feel like anyone else will want to play with him, so he sits apart from the group. The bully instantly knows where to go, and the circle of hurting begins. See, it's through the feeling of being vulnerable that you become vulnerable in the physical. If the boy had walked outside for recess and told himself, I can fit in, he would probably be playing sports right now. The, this applies to the bully as well. He didn't have anyone else to play with, probably because of some insecurity, mental, that led him to need the, to hurt others. He thinks he's doing good for himself by hurting the boy, except he's really just hurting himself long term. You can look into society and see a vast amount of evidence to support it too. The people who are most successful are those who talk most of success. Those who speak most of illness have it. Yes, illness is also a creation of yours. If you have a low immune system, it's because of you. Typically, we like to blame things on the virus going around or our own immune systems, but the way that we become susceptible to them is from inside, whether that there's some ongoing negative energy or some bad feeling that we allow into ourselves. We can heal ourselves also, but I'm gonna save healing for another video. There's only one thing that becomes apparent from this understanding. You create your own reality. We are 100% responsible for the situations that we find ourselves in, the things that happen to us, good and bad. Throughout history, we've always played the blame game. It's, it's his fault I didn't get the promotion. It's her fault I couldn't go to the game. It's everyone else's fault, I'm so depressed. Whatever it is, and this may be the hardest thing to truly get, it's your fault. Your happiness, your sadness, your fears and your fortunes. Every single experience of your life on earth was because of you. Remember, just as you are creating your own individual reality, we are all co-creating our realities as a collective. We are one species, and as a species, we are creating the realities that we are experiencing together. One common argument I hear is, what about starving kids in Africa? How are they creating their starving reality? I would respond to that, that the Western way of life is not really allowing for everyone on the planet to live in the same abundance that the Westerners are, is it? We're using up all of the world's resources, hardly sharing anything unless they're paying a lot for it or if we're getting something out of it. And we ask why they're poor? We haven't been sharing with our brothers and sisters around the planet. But again, that's us as a collective creating the reality that we experience around the planet. This applies through all levels. As a family, you create your reality and your actions will change what the family experiences. Because of this, and because we are not in tune with ourselves, it may often seem that sometimes we don't have complete control over what it is we experience. Sometimes we're seemingly forced into scenarios that seem out of our control. This happens as a result of our disharmony and also lack of connection to our own intuition. When we become more in tune with ourselves, we can feel out certain scenarios and decide if that's a path we want to take. Maybe I won't go down into the dark alley. Maybe it feels right to not take that job. 
Beyond that, once you have the experience that you feel is out of your control, now it's your turn to decide what you do next. You can allow the experience to get the best of you and drain your energy and move into a dense, unhappy place emotionally. Or you can decide to take it for what it is, an experience, and keep moving forward. Every dark cloud has a silver lining, and if you're looking for that silver lining, you'll have a much easier time finding it. Many of us have heard of this thing called the Law of Attraction, which talks about something similar to this, but talks more about evidence and not much about this thought realm. Over the entire world, people have written in to tell of their amazing stories, where they really focused on having what they wanted, and got it through miracles and coincidences. This is but a small piece in the vast ocean of the internal world that I'll be talking about. It is, however, very real, and you can literally change everything in your life by willing it so. I know this from personal experience, and it's not hard to find others who have too. One continuous argument I hear from people who deny this law of attraction is, you don't just think things and change everything by sitting on your ass. To which I reply, exactly, you never stop moving. Just change your mindset and continue on with your life. Create your emotions in your mind, then move into them physically. Don't let your emotions control you. Pull your thoughts into the physical realm. What can you do to change things? Well, just be good to yourself. Fill yourself up with the emotion of love and happiness as you go about your day. Treat yourself and try to change your perception of your life from what others think is best for you to what you think is best for you. Take a few minutes to sit down and actually just ask yourself, what do you really want? Of course, at first a lot of people might first think of money, wealth, fame, and luxury. And hey, those things are pretty nice. But will they buy you happiness? I guess that depends on you. I found in my experiences that beyond all of those things, what people really want is to be accepted, appreciated, and loved. By giving that to others, you will in turn get that back, and the bond that connects you to everyone around you will strengthen so much further. I want to bring up one more thing before I run out of time. There was a scientist in Japan a few years back who made an incredible discovery, but one that also went largely unnoticed and recognized by the global scientific community. Dr. Masaru Emoto discovered that by putting words on a side of a glass of water and freezing the water, you could change how the water would freeze into crystals. On a jar that said, I love you, this is how the water crystal froze. On a jar that said, you make me sick, I want to kill you, it froze like this. If thoughts can do that to water, just imagine what thoughts can do to us. Well, looks like I'm about to, out of time for today. Before I go, I want to leave you with words to sit on. For anyone who is looking for direction right now, you can have, do, or be anything you want. Namaste. Thanks for listening. Nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game.